One, one of the things that's interesting about tonight, and it's sad, is that this resolution uh, to enter into agreement with a corporate search firm isn't even on the agenda. They don't want us to talk about it, so we had to actually call and play like we were going to speak to a different agenda point, and then we have to, just to get on the list to speak. And the, the, the opinions they want to hear are the ones that they agree with, or the ones that they can tokenize and play like that is representative of this community, and it's absolutely not. Uh, what we're saying is we need a democratic process for selecting our next superintendent, and what they're giving us is a facade of democracy. Uh, It's been moved to the motion to move 282 from the table, which relates to raising the associate's peak. It's been moved by Commissioner Powell, seconded by Commissioner um, Cruz. Any um, further discussion around 282? I think I just want to say to the last remaining people who have concern about this issue that uh, I genuinely believe that we can have uh, an outside provider and still provide robust Thank you. Any other further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 The ayes have it. Thank you. Um, we fought as hard as we could to preserve this institution of an elected school board. And what we're fighting for now is an increased democracy and decision making practices that will lead to, uh, to, to what the, the change that we know needs to, needs to take place. The way not to do that is to cut out voices that you need to hear.
significant number of people from the community just uh, attended the open board meeting um, in which a hand-picked group was uh, giving some feedback about the superintendent's search process and uh, this has repeatedly been a problem you know at, at, at certain public uh, speakouts we've said we we don't want a hand-picked group choosing our superintendent we want it to be an open process and uh, when they started the meeting a uh, number of people started a mic check process to express that again and they've heard this before they heard that we did not want a corporate search firm mm -hmm. and they went ahead with the corporate search firm so it feels like they're taking our voice and you know, just sort of blocking it out. So whatever forum they do give us for, for input, I have little confidence that they're actually hearing what we say. Um, were leaders of this um, community. Um, for example, people like um, Malik, for example, um, not for the people, and I was just really, really appalled by that. Um, there were a couple people on the board that were bending over backwards to fight for the community, and I do commend those people. Uh, Mary Adams was actually one of them um, putting on the table um, what we want as parents, as community members. excited about what just happened. Um, about 20 to 30 people from Occupy Rochester and also um, different groups came and decided that they weren't really happy with the way that the superintendent search committee is going and they weren't really happy with the process and they didn't really want input in this process because they didn't think they were going to be listened to. They wanted to start all over, so um, these people have been, we've all been organizing for a long time, trying to um, fundamentally change how this is going. And today we decided that it's going in the wrong path. We're not gonna let it just keep going, and we're gonna shut down the meeting. So we used the mic check technique, and we just didn't let them talk for about an hour, um, just after the meeting for about an hour. Now you have a legitimate voice. Oh, no, no, no. no. Rochester School Superintendent, right? Right. right. Potential right. candidates, correct. A superintendent that recognizes okay. Show the hands of Arubo. poverty. Strong. Oh, I like that. Yeah. We, got cons we got consensus. We've got our first criteria. I okay. okay. realizes that poverty is at the core. Deal with that. Yes. Deal with that. Superintendent must be a master teacher. Yes, an educator himself. The super number six school, because we not just a number, we a family. That's All right. right. No school closings. No, 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 no
school clothing. Yep. Support the highest need students. Support the highest need students. That sounds good to me. I think I can agree with that. When he first came to our school, he promised us bus fare, I mean, you know, um, transportation to get to school. He promised us that we all have first priority. He promised us within a year our school would open. He lied to us, because in the papers, it do not say nothing about that. They're lying to us. So that's about being, uh, having integrity, being and trustworthy. And I got one more thing here. I got one more thing to say. That's what that's about. Okay. Integrity, trustworthy, honesty, and forthrightness with the community. Oh. Um, does anyone like to make a comment about the perspective of what's happening in there? Who are you? I'm Dawn. What is that for RCTV? It's a media. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. Do you want to say anything about... Nothing needs to be said. Nothing needs to be said. Mike checked the meeting and they didn't want to hear what we had to say, so everyone just left. None of them had any comment. They didn't want to engage at all. So they left and we took their seats and we started coming up with our own criteria, uh, the community's criteria for what we think um, the superintendent selection process should entail and what qualities the uh, new superintendent that will be chosen should have. You had this dynamic where there's a group of people who want to talk about ideas, and those who are tasked with engaging them have left the room. So really spontaneously and just like organically, people just went up and, and sat down in their seats and started talking into the microphones to each other as if we were the committee. Simple, simple process is, the, if the, there's a problem here, why can't we have a superintendent from here? Why can't we have part of the solution come from within? Because there are many people that have the qualifications that can step up to the podium, but they're going outside of the box to try to create uh, a solution and truthfully it's making a bigger problem. Therefore, if we look within our own selves, we'll find the solution. There's plenty of people here with the, I mean, the, the capabilities to actually uplift, and people that will do it for a lot less than what they're, it's, it's like dollars and cents. They're not really thinking about the kids, they're thinking more in dollars and cents instead of the people, and that's wrong. It's something totally different to create space where folks with different ideas and from different walks of life can come together and share those ideas and, and focus in on and, and, and disagree and, and, and then ask for clarity and, and gain clarity and, and then come to some kind of common understanding. Uh, that's something that very rarely happens and that's really what we've been trying to have happen in this large process from, from the get-go. That's what we wanted from the beginning, that's what we want in, in every step of this process and we, we did that temporarily tonight. Well, next, the police moved in. Everybody yeah. gather. Your everybody in this gather. Point, what happens? Everybody gather right here, please. Is this a public forum? Everybody gather right here. Thank you. 
to the committee and I'm committed to this community. And I belong here. I belonged here when they were speaking, and I belong here when this committee that I'm a part of. I'm asking you to clear the room. If you stay, then that's your choice. Okay. Who is out there right now? Okay. And they're coming back in here to meet. Cynthia? Depends on what happens here. Ms. Elliott is sitting here. I will sit here. These are people on the committee. I will sit here. Take note. Remember when we talked about the police always being the force of defense? That doesn't mean they're not good guys. She's betting me with the best. One of the most amazing things that happened at this meeting tonight is that Commissioner-elect Mary Adams uh, and also uh, Yolanda Montalvo, who's here representing teachers, representing the Rochester Teachers Association, refused to leave the room when we shut the meeting down. All the rest of the committee uh, members uh, got up and walked out of the room. Mary and Yolanda stayed in the room and then, in turn, were literally threatened by the chief of security for the Rochester City School District that they, if they didn't leave, they would be arrested. That's amazing. I did say, and I mean it, we're, that's hinging on fascism. I mean, that's amazing. It's unbelievable. I mean, freedom of speech is one thing. The way this was set up, it was not freedom of speech. It was more set to a point where I'm gonna say, and you're gonna listen to what I got to say, but you have no voice. Then on top of it, they're saying that Truthfully, the parents of Rochester have no input on what's going on with the kids. Now that's wrong right off the muscle. Then you call the police and then you try to say might is going to make right. And there's, a, there's a ten, even a 10 year old child in here. You're going to, and you're going to try to intimidate everybody by the show of force. That ain't going to get nothing done but just get people more agitated. If you're trying to lead by fear, that's not going to work. So basically the only way that they're able to carry on this illegitimate process is through armed force, uh, which is what we see now. continue to build relationships and have them be real deeper and meaningful relationships with people within Occupy and other partnering organizations, which really has some real positive momentum and some great potential behind it. Um, so we're obviously going to continue to do that as we build the Community Education Task Force and really build a kind of vibrant movement that can really have the potential to push open this space, such as the things that we did within tonight, and have that be part of ongoing action. I think that any time um, especially in, in our society where, you know, democracy, democratic processes are weakened, there really isn't as much space for all voices to be heard as there should be in a truly democratic society. I think that any time groups organize and raise their voices, especially in sort of a coordinated, organized confrontation with um, elected powers that ought to be, you know, really directly accountable, I think it, it has an impact. We've been reaching out to them around this issue since April. This is, this is almost like a last resort, what we did here tonight. It's not like we just up and did some reaction. We've been attempting to engage the board since we first found out that Jean-Claude Bizarre was leaving town. And they haven't responded. We even went as far as to de hand deliver a letter to the home of the president of the board. No response. That's how they operate typically in this town is they just ignore people with the hope that they'll go away. Mm -hmm. Our message is, we're not going away. <laughs> I wish I was.